audience, he is the beast from Hollywood East, Michael the Hammer! Hey folks, Michael the Hammer Mulligan here with Gary Foreman. Gary, what's up? Napaga, number three. Number three. Number three. Nice. Tell me about it. Um, March 17th, Jungle yep. Plex um, in Plymouth. Yeah, uh, where else would it be? It's got to be here. It's got to be here. Um, after doing the first couple in Rhode Island, we decided to bring it to Massachusetts. And it's very interesting. The amount of attention it's getting here. Oh my God! Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah. And you know, you and I've been talking about this for a long time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a couple, a couple of years yeah. about yeah. this sport of pancreation. Right. And once people finally get an idea of what it is, once they see it, it for anybody, anybody who does any type of combat sport who doesn't want to get in the cage. Right. It's a perfect place to be. Oh, not, not only not only that doesn't want to get in the cage, well, you can't, you can't get, the get in the cage. You get the kids. I.e. Shaney. Yep. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Got some interesting things coming up. I talked to every school, every school that I talked to, everybody out there, was to talk of the fights the other night. We went to the, to the uh, what was it, Cage Titans fights the other night. Great and time. everybody's talking about this. I ask every school because I'm interested because my son's going to be in it, and I just want to know who out there is doing it, and it's it's booming. I got I got big guys that have been on the show. I got uh, Eric Foley said he wanted to do it. Yeah, I'd love to see him. Right? And, and Dwayne Fords. Love to see him, right? So those are some monsters, and those are some. The thing about them is, is that they're big guys. They gotta realize it ain't about the strength. And Eric, I think, would actually be good at this because it's a skill thing. I'll take that. Yeah. yeah I, I'm, um, no matter what your your skill set is, no matter doesn't matter what your background is. There's a way that you can win the points. Right. Here and and that's what it was all about for the first time, giving all disciplines an opportunity to compete on the same mat. Instead of, hey, if you're a point karate school, that's all you do is just point karate matches. Right. If you're a wrestling school, that's all you do is wrestling matches. Here, you know, with, with pancreation, they can all meet on the same mat. Yep. So, yeah, we're really excited. I talked to, um, I talked to a lot of people that are telling me about, this time it seems like it's more Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Gi and No Gi. But am I right in thinking that you're doing that to bring these? Because you know there's Naga and there's all these other tournaments out there for, for jiu-jitsu, for the ground. I think by doing this, are you drawing more people in to see Napaga? No doubt. Um, we've kind of stepped out of ourselves between my wife and I. Right. And brought in John Fain from Triumph BJJ, who's very well known um, in this whole area for BJJ. And we brought him in as our tournament director for BJJ. Okay. So there's a there's a um, a method to the madness of hey you bring in somebody like him. Yep. The attention now gets a little bit more focused on his end towards bringing the BJJ crowd in. Right. And what we hope is that the BJJ crowd will see the pancreation and say, hey, we want to do that. We can do that. Well, we keep in mind, before you came along, before the pancreation came on, I used to bring Shane and, and you know, the school was bring all the guys to, to Naga, uh, North American Grappling Association, because that's all there was for kids to do was grapple. Now, all these grapplers are going to come into the building in Plymouth, and they're going to see this pancreation thing going on, and they're going to freak. Well, that's, that's the hope. I mean, it, you know... Again, you and I have been talking about this sport for a couple of years. And, yep. Hey, where do we think it could be in a year or two? Where it could it be five years down the road? You know, we talk about this sport of pancreation, which actually was an Olympic sport back. Greeks did it, Greek, right? Back in 648 BC, it was yep. an Olympic sport. There is no reason that in 10 years from now this couldn't be an Olympic sport the way we do it, because. There's pretty much all the elements of what's in the Olympics now. Right. In this, I mean, I thought I figured MMA would be an Olympic sport. It's too bloody. You yeah. really think so? I mean, they got boxing. Doesn't boxing hurt you more than MMA? Um, it doesn't look 
as bloody as MMA, and I'll tell you why. Because the Olympics is all geared towards housewives and women, and you know that's their demographic. It's all oh, the I see it all day long. It's on. I understand. All so right. All right. I mean, that's just my opinion. I mean, I think you could make MMA an Olympic sport by changing a couple of things. Like in Bellator, when they do the tournament, yep, they don't allow elbows in their tournament. Oh no, kidding! To the head. Yep. So when you're on the ground, there's no elbow. Right, and that's probably 80% of the blood. That's right. All the blood comes from, from yeah. the elbows. I mean, it's probably the one, if I was going to tweak MMA, yeah. probably the one thing that I would change. I would probably change no elbows to the, the face on the ground. Right. Um, but Because it's a direct smash to the head and the head's on the yeah, ground. Yeah, I mean, look at it with a, a pointy elbow and there's no place for your head to go. Right. So, but... I know, I know that the UFC would love it to be an Olympic sport. Yep. I mean, it, the way it's growing, just think about where it could go if it was an, oh my gosh. an Olympic sport. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, even now. We're, we're in the infancy of mixed martial arts. You know what's crazy? There's still people that don't know the difference between the UFC and MMA. Yeah, I had Some a guy. People ask you that. I had a guy. Well, usually he's wrestling. He's a wrestler. <laughs> I got a guy yesterday. I'm getting my suit fitted for something I got coming up. And the and the guy, hey, this guy over here, he's a wrestler. <laughs> yeah, that's like okay. Hey, I'm, do you do that UFC stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah. That, 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 I'm a cage fighter. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's pretty common. Yeah, but, exactly. Hey, do you know UFC? <laughs> so to, to go back to the the term. You know, we, we've done something a little bit different for this tournament. You know, yep. We have a super fight between two of the best, in my opinion, gi jiu-jitsu guys, you know, probably in the whole Northeast, and Dan Simler um, from Simler BJJ, yep. and Mark Stevens from Jiu-Jitsu Nation. Wow. They, they are both on the Ultimate Fighter show. Wow. Um, they, they both have really big jiu-jitsu schools. Yep. And they do MMA also, but I think they do it as a vehicle to promote their school. Sure. You know, more than anything else. Which is fine. I mean, a lot of people do that, yeah. Yeah. Now, now these guys aren't going to fight anybody else but each other. It's these just two. like an exp exhibition? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a money match. Oh, it it's is? Super fight. Yeah. Oh, nice. And nice. just for these two guys, you know, the winner takes all. Yeah. And we also have the Open. Right. And the Open is for... You have MMA. three Opens. We have three opens. We have a Pancration Open tournament. Right, which anybody can join and win, doesn't matter. What's, is there an age bottom to that? Or? It, well, it's 18 because it's for adults. Oh, okay. That's number one. And number Not 17? <laughs> well, we, well, we take an <laughs> exception with a, uh, with a parental <laughs> waiver, <laughs> maybe. Um, and then the, second, the second part of that is with the, the Pancration part of it, it's open to anybody who's an intermediate in a ball. Right. So um, in the jiu-jitsu part of it, the gi, it's anybody who is a brown belt and above yep. can enter it. And then the no gi submission grappling open, it's just an intermediate and above. Nice. And that's a thousand dollar cash prize for, for the winner. Nice. So what we're hoping is that some of the big BJJ guys yep. Want to come and check this out? Why wouldn't they? Yeah, why wouldn't they? Yeah, exactly. I mean, this gives you an opportunity. And we always talk about this: an opportunity to compete with some of the best. Right. You know, and it's a conversation you and I have had, even with your fighting career. Yeah. You didn't ever want to fight bums. Nope. That does absolutely nothing for you. Exactly. And these guys are all stuck. I won't say stuck, but they're all pretty much inside there. Their, uh, their schools training against the same people every day. Absolutely. There's no real venue for them. There's a couple, like, but, but uh, you know, Naga, I was pretty, you know, people got second place prizes because there was no third place. Right. You know what I mean? There isn't a lot of activity going on in a lot of the weight classes over there. So there's really no venue for people to go out and to try themselves, to test themselves, to see how much they've improved, you know? Absolutely. Look at, you aren't going to win everything when you go to these things. You're going to find out where you can improve yourself, as far as I'm concerned. I would, I would think so. I mean, if, if you're really that much of an egomaniac, I mean, everybody wants to be competitive. Sure. And everybody wants to go out there and try to win. Yep. Um, 
just by the competitive nature of anybody that trains, you know, that's what they're looking for. But to test yourself against people that are in your class, or better, or better, or were better, and you want to find out if you got there yet, to give you an idea of where you're at, what you need to work at, what your strengths are, because like you say, you train with the same people every day, right. they know their moves, they know your moves, and you don't really get to see a whole lot different. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's power. You know, I watch wrestling constantly because of Shane. And, and, you know, every school has their own thing. You know, these guys watch out. This guy's going to do a throw by. This team is known for their, you know, plumbing South Power half. This team over here is known for the snap downs. So, so each team knows what that other team has. But you don't know how good you do against that until you face it. You know, th there's a saying that says, you never know what you don't know until you see it. There you go. I mean, you think that at your school, you've got the best training, you have the best trainers, you're doing everything that you need to do to get ready for whatever you're doing. Right. Because that's all you see. That's all you know. That's all you know. And when you go to another school and you see stuff that they do and you say, hey, that's pretty cool. Right. You know, I like to incorporate that into my regiment. I like to incorporate something, but until you see it, Right. You don't know. Exactly. You know, even building houses, there's a lot of things that I don't know because I haven't seen it yet. You know, people say, you know, that, that's the word ignorance. You know what I mean? Ignorance is always posted as a bad word. It's not a bad word. It means you don't know yet. Ignorance is something that's, you know, you learn from, you know, so. Well, when you, when you ignore something that could be better just because it's not from you. Yep. You know, that might be, you know, a severe form of ignorance. Right. But. You know, I, I look at it, everything that I do, I try to surround myself with people who are better at what I'm trying to do than I am. Right. And, and that's what's going to make you, that's what's going to make you and what you do more successful yep. um, in the long run. But if you feel like you need to be top dog and you have to be the one that knows everything, you'll be limited. Right. Yeah, you can't learn if you know it all already. No. Right, exactly. The other thing too is is that the the thing that, that a lot of the people need to, to understand is, is that a loss is is not the end of the world. You know, you see the guys I call it the share of doom on the ultimate fighter. Every single kid that comes out of the, the cage after losing their particular match sits in the chair and goes, I let everybody down. I let everybody down. You didn't let anybody down. Nobody thinks any less of you for losing that yeah, fight. But that's just emotions talking right, at right. the time. Um, yeah. you know, in most most people that, most fighters, that makes them stronger. That loss, whether it humbles you, whether it... Teaches you. It definitely has to teach you something. Yep. And if it doesn't, you're not paying attention. Right. Um, we, we've, we've looked at it. I mean, fighters that we've had fight for us that, I mean, probably one of the most improved guys that I've ever seen in this sport of MMA is Robbie Roberts. Yeah, I love him. Robbie's my He's man. A great kid. I mean, Robbie's a yeah. CFX middleweight champ. Yeah. Little plug there for you, Robbie. Yeah. Robbie! Um, <laughs> you know, he was an independent training on his own. Beep! <laughs> yeah, not a very good record. Yeah. Um, was never in great condition. Um, but he got, finally got to a point where he said, you know what? I can't be an independent, so we hooked up with Matt Lee from the factory, and who's absolutely one of my favorite trainers slash guys yep. in the whole business of MMA. Nice. Um, that guy is a warrior. You've seen, you've seen him fight. I mean, he fights, I mean, he fought in Bellator a couple of times, and I mean, wow, he's a warrior. But with Robbie, he, just, he latched on to the school, he bought into the program, yeah. and if he's not the most un, the most improved fighter... Oh my god, what's he like 7-0 mm -hmm. now since then, 6-0? I, I think he's 6-1. 6-1 one. Six and one since I mean, some of the back. guys he lost to, I mean, I'd like to see their rematch. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I, would, I would love to see where, where he goes with that. Yeah. But it's finding the right people to surround yourself with. Who's, who's he fighting? He's got a fight coming up. Who's he's he fighting Jay Dublin on uh, March 17th. Wow, huh? Well, See, this is the thing, folks. This is we got two things going on. We got first we got Napaga during the day. When does that start? What time in the morning is that? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock in the morning Napaga starts. 
You can get online at what the pocket.com the pocket.com right and and that'll be printed across the bottom of the screen <laughs> right here all right so the pocket.com you can find out all the information you need from there um, have your your the leader of your school talk to Gary find out what's going on but but it's it's important to get your kids to go and your people your adults whoever wants to do this over there to join the Paga to find out what it's all about if you got a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school Get there, you know, gi, no gi. Uh, they not only have the super classes in in the uh, the what do we call them? Bonus fights? So what do we the ones? That's the open. That's, that's the, open. the open. Not only the opens, but they also have the kids. What do they yeah, say? Yeah, they're the regular. I mean, there there is no age um, minimum. Right. So we have under eight years old. Yep. Eight to ten years old. Eleven to thirteen. Fourteen to seventeen. Yep. And then it goes goes to the adult. And every one of those age groups is also a weight class and also an experience level. Nice. So it doesn't matter what your experience, what your age is, um, what your weight is, there's a, a, a bracket for you. Right. And, and it's, worth, it's worth going. It's worth going to watch. Even if you're not, if you live in Plymouth, it's worth going down there to just to see what's happening in your backyard. This is a really good sport. I've been involved with with it with Gary bringing my son there to train since he started this in Rhode Island. And again, we talked about it before we opened it up because both of us feel the same thing. That for this sport to evolve, we need these kids to be able to do it early, to start doing it early. And this is the way to get up through the ranks, you know, this is a way to learn what you're doing. And then after you do this a few times, then you decide whether or not you want to jump in the cage. Hey, what? What we've come up with, the sport of pancreation is really for anyone and everyone. If you're a professional who trains at a school, you know, you would never do a fight, but you're very competitive, it's good for you. If for women who do kickboxing, you know, at school, it's good for you. Because the sport of pancreation is sort of a lighter version of what you would see in MMA, except for there's no strike into the face. There's never any contact to the head. There's no knees, there's no elbows. So you're punching and kicking to the legs and body for points, not to hurt somebody. And, and that is a rule you can get you can get penalized if somebody kicks too hard absolutely. or if somebody's trying to do damage to another person, they get penalized because that's not what it's about. It isn't about how big and bad you are, it's about your skill level. It's about, you know, using what you've learned and seeing how much you've learned. <clears throat> yeah, I mean we we've tried to make all of our officials, um, and this is all about safety. Yep. You know, it, it's all about our officials keeping our competitors as safe when they leave as when they walk in. We don't want them to get hurt. So, if we have a competitor who's actually trying to hurt somebody, they'll be instantly disqualified. And look, there's going to be accidents. I mean, last year, Shaney got kicked in the, uh, well, yeah. yeah, and then another kid did a spinning back fist and punched him in the eye. And, um, yeah, so, so these things happen. He could take it. He's a big boy, and it was kind of made him excel in his kicking a little bit after that, actually. But it brought out a little uh, mulligan in him, I guess I'll say. He got mulliganized. Yeah, he did. <laughs> He, he isn't he isn't spinning breakfast anymore, but uh, but yeah. So that is part of it. There is a possibility that you might you know a little accident might happen, but it's not intentional and it is a great sport. I mean, it's just a blast to watch. I, I get it. so excited, man. I got my camera going. I have to have somebody else hold it because I shake. You know? Yeah, the, the the last tournament. Yeah, you and the referee going back back and forth with each other. That was humorous. Oh my god. Yeah, that was that was see. The, he got Shady got punched and and I didn't care about that. You know, I think I was angry that the the referee missed the front kick that Shady got him before that. You know, I think and and somebody said, oh, does it, oh, Shady guy says never mind that. He says he missed a three point kick. <laughs> and then when I said to Shady afterwards, I said take his liver out. When I said take his liver out, that means kick to the liver because that is one of the sections where you are allowed to right. to score. So the referee said. Oh, you can't say take the liver out. And I said, don't let him hit him in the eye. <laughs> but it wasn't, my, my intention wasn't to tell Shaney to cause damage to somebody else because, right. number one, Shaney's not that guy anyways. Right. He's a very humble, nice kid. As a matter of fact, he, I think they put him, there was another kid who, it was in a gi, and he was probably 15 years old, and he was small, and he really didn't have any experience. And the whole time that Shaney and him were rolling, he was teaching him. 
He talked that. to him the whole time. He never he never heard him. He let the kid. He never fit. He could have finished him in 30, 10 seconds, right. you know. But he didn't. He worked him for the whole match. Never finished him and just taught the kid the whole time. That is probably the one thing I love about this sport. Exactly. That at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's about the competition. You know, you can leave out of there and talking about the matches. Exactly. You know, and those are things, those are like those memories that, you know, nobody can ever take away from you. Yeah, and it's nobody's hating each other either. It's not about, even when you stand there, you know, yeah, sometimes in a mixed martial arts act, you know, you got like Sloppy Joe and, 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 and Baker, you know, those guys going back, back and, and forth. It was fun. Show. It was fun. Me and Foley, Foley threw a chair at me. I called him Mick Foley and I was Blackjack Mug. I mean, it's fun. It's, it's you know, a little WWE thrown in there. But bottom line, at the end of the day, when these things are over, there's a, there's a huge sense of respect for each other. Well, probably the one thing I've seen the most is that. Exactly. You know, you can kill each other inside the cage. Yep. And you come outside of the cage and, you know, after the show, I mean, we've seen it at our shows, you know, a lot. You, after the fight, the two two guys who just fought, yep. half hour later, were over in the corner talking, having a beer and, oh, you, it's know, fun. you know, yeah. hugging each other and saying, man, you know what, I respect you. Yeah. Well, now you share something. You two just did something together that most people on this earth aren't going to do. No, it takes something pretty special yep. for somebody to walk in that cage. That cage door closes, and guess what? Now it's just you. Mano, mano. Yeah, there's no, there's no, you know, this isn't a team sport. No, you know, thank God for the teams, because like in the, and we were just talking about Robbie Roberts, without having Matt Lee in his team, Robbie wouldn't have the record that he has. Yeah. That's your preparation. Your team is your preparation. That's what you need to do the whole time. We talked to, to Local Lobo, we know that, you know, the guys, Bill Mahoney and, and Scott from South Shore, we got Joe Lazone. You know that another part of the team is those guys have these guys in the back room before a fight, and they're going in their head. They're in their head, and they're pointing them in the right direction. They're keeping them focused. They're keeping your adrenaline level on the right area because you'll just explode if you don't have somebody taking care of you. There, there, are, there aren't a lot of guys who can take a fight on their own. Right. Sit in that back room waiting for their fight to come up. That's the hardest part. You drive to New Hampshire, fight anybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's the moment. Yeah. But you'll take you'll sitting in that back room, yeah. waiting for your fight to come up is excruciating. Oh, especially when you're like the last two fights of the night. Then you're all night long. You you know your fights. You got 22 fights half the time, so it's midnight before you you know. Yeah, I mean, we've made some, some changes, and we started with the last show. I mean, we used to have it so all the fighters would have to report between 3.30 and 4 o'clock. Yeah, no, yeah. So now the amateurs will show up at that time, and Good. they'll start fighting at 7 o'clock. Yep. Yeah. When the fights start, that's when the pros show up now. Good. So they show up at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Well, they might go on at 9 o'clock. So yeah. I, I went home. When I fought from I went home because I right, was right down, right down the street. Yeah, right down the street. So he says, you're all set. Just go home and relax. You know? That that was, that worked out great for you. It was huge. It was necessary. I mean, I remember the guy giving me my blood plus. I don't know. It looks a little high. Just don't even stop. Well, why don't you come back later? Dude, it won't be a later. <laughs> it only goes up from here. The guy's squeezing my ankles. And so. I <laughs> Was it was Dr. Dr. E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was a good guy. He was fine. Guy. Yeah, and guy. he was fine. He was fine with it. He understood, you know, it's like you're an older guy, this, these things happen and, and they didn't want to stop the show. And plus he knew it wasn't getting out of line and I had thirty more fighters behind me. I'm not leaving until <laughs> I'm you not leaving. Me. Get it done. Get it so done. He didn't want to be the first knockout of the night. <laughs> it could happen, brother. It could happen. All right, folks, listen. We talked about Napaga. It is on March seventeenth at the Jungle Plex in Plymouth. CFX is going to be, what number is this now? 19. CFX 19. 19 shows. Right, wow, you guys are doing great. CFX 19. Every show has been great, too. There's been no joke here. This has been awesome. All the fighters are great. So we're going to probably have Linda in here talking about that eventually. I have already had Banana was on last week, which was today, but you'll get it. Uh, and uh, we got more fighters coming in to talk about that. So look forward to seeing you all there on March 17th, uh, Napaga.com. Go check it out. Tell your school to check it out. Talk to Gabby personally about that. Um, I think you'll have a great time. Thanks for coming.
Gary, as usual, folks, thanks for coming to another Fireside Chat with Michael the Hammer Mulligan and Gary Foreman. Well, folks, that was a blast for me. Gary Foreman is not only a uh, promoter, a manager, uh, runs CFX, or his wife Linda Shields runs CFX. He runs Napaga, but he's also a referee. I haven't seen him much in the ring lately, but I know that he gets in there all the time and he referees a lot of fights, so it's kind of fun to see. He's uh, probably the biggest guy in the ring when he's refereeing the fights. Uh, he's a wealth of knowledge about this sport. He's very passionate about this sport, and if you listen to him talk about the Napaga, you'll see that, that he... Um, He's trying to develop something here that is going to be good for the youth of America, good for people that don't want to get into the ring. Something that's got a lot of um, a lot of structure. You know, he's very passionate about it, and it's a good thing to see. We've been talking about it for years. Um, I was involved in his first two, and uh, I got to watch it grow. Now the third one's in Plymouth here at the Jungle Plex on March 17th, and um, I can't wait to be there. Shane's going to be in there. I know a lot of local kids, a lot of local youth are going to be in there competing on that day. It's nice that we were able to bring it here. So I hope you get to go see it and enjoy it. A um, little common sense. I don't know what I want to talk about. So I'll just say have a great day, and uh, I'll see you next week on Fireside.